اوكي اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Welcome uh, all of you to our weekly session. Alhamdulillah. Um, before we begin, Kalada, let's recite Surah Al-Fatiha silently from the heart. Make the intention that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala places His knowledge and His light into your heart directly. Inshallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, Nuwasal um, al Hadith, we continue our discussion about the seven obstacles um, on the path of spirituality. Alhamdulillah, you know, this is a beautiful journey. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know about you guys, but then uh, uh, by teaching this stuff, I get to also study it and review it, and uh, there are always good reminders. Alhamdulillah, Hagil Kil. Just to refresh, This is a book written by Imam Ghazali, This is one of the final books he wrote called Minhaj al-Abideen, Ila Jannati Rabbil Alameen. And he talks about, from his experience on his spiritual path, you know, al-aqabat, what are the obstacles that come on the way? But he defines seven obstacles, the first of which was knowledge. Number two was tawbah or repentance. The third was al-awaiq, and there are actually four yani, sub-categories in this third uh, barrier or, or obstacle. Well, our sub are one, dunya, the attachment to worldly uh, life. The second one is uh, people. The third one is shaitan. And the fourth one is a nafs. And we're currently talking about shaitan. This is like part two of shaitan. So it's kind of like 3C. Yeah. And then fi al-awarad wal bawa'at al qawadih and then al-shukr, inshallah, we'll get to there. And we'll we'll talk about it when we get there, bidnillah, inshallah. So last week, tkalamna hana an al-shaytan, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him as an enemy, but he told us in he's uh da'if, in the kay the shaytan he kind of da'ifa. And if you know his tactics, his strategies, his tricks, then you can actually um inshallah be able to deal with that. So we'll go, we're gonna dive in slightly deeper today, you know, okay. And Mawdu al Khawatir. And al Khawatir is in this, يعني, uh, in spiritual texts, it refers to thoughts or suggestions, okay, or ideas that come to your mind, okay. But think of them as, يعني, when, when we think about thoughts, we, in a very shallow way, we describe them as negative or positive. In, in psychology, the, يعني, but, uh, Subhanallah, in our text, what's really amazing is that يعني, it's given a much, much more kind of deeper, uh, you get a deeper understanding of the nature of the, uh, the thoughts. Uh, فا, what are thoughts? الخاطر, what is it? Every deed starts off with a thought. And uh, it comes, this word khatar comes from uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he describes Jannah. He says, فِي الْجَنَّةِ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٌ He says that in Jannah there is uh, what no eye has ever seen, what no ear has ever heard of, and what has never even crossed the heart of a human being. And what's interesting here is the language of the Prophet ﷺ, which means that the thought actually it is uh, suggested to you in the heart. Okay? Our entire topic is about the heart. So what we need to understand is that or these ideas or thoughts first come into our hearts. Okay? And then you sort of feel processing and all sorts of stuff. Okay? So, um, First of all, are we accountable for the thoughts that are suggested to us? Uh, depends, right? So if you accept al-khatara, let's say, for example, you get a khatar, 
and now well, uh, I need to take revenge, right? From someone for doing that, that's someone that has harmed you. I want to take revenge. That's a, a, a khatr that has come to you. Now, if you agree with that khatr, then yes, now you are actually, you kind of are held accountable. Um, but if you say, no, 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 you know what? And like you kind of do istighfar and tawbah and you're like, no, 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 that's an evil thought. I don't want to take revenge. I'm going to forgive. But that's, then you're fine with it. And of course, what comes after acknowledging the thought is al-amali bihi. And you take action. You actually take revenge. And that's just an example here, right? So that's where respons- responsibility starts in terms of thoughts, okay? But thoughts in general, there's nothing wrong with having these thoughts. It's how you respond to them, right? Do you acknowledge it? Do you take action on it or not? And then the big question is, how do you know if this thought is good or bad? Sometimes we have these confusions. But we're going to be answering that question today. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at like khatr al-shar. Like how do we know if this khatr, this idea, is it satanic? Is it, has it come from shaitan? Or is it from my own kind of evil nafs, right? And nafs al-amara bisu. And we're, we're going to look at like two different types of Good thoughts also. Good thoughts can come either either from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or through angels. Uh, inshallah, we're going to be looking at that stuff, inshallah. So, al-waswas. Like, like we said, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in Surah Al-Nas, shaitan but as al-waswas, the one who whispers, the one who attacks and suggests. Uh, and then khannas is the one who runs away when you do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And waswas as a word because of the repetition of the wow scene, wow scene, highlights the fact that shaitan will never, ever, ever, ever stop. Okay, if, uh, yes, Allah said that in the shaitan is kind of he's weak, but don't ever think that shaitan has given up. Right? So you haven't won this battle against shaitan until your last breath, basically. Right? Um, and, and thinking that you've won this battle is uh, it's a delusion. Right? So don't fool yourself. But the ulama also kind of give an advice that لا تنشغل به So um, don't be overly obsessive about satanic thoughts. And يعني, you know, and, uh, there's a famous saying that what you resist persists. But if you're always, يعني, you're doing waswasa, waswasa, and you're like, oh my God, shaitan, this, shaitan, that, shaitan's trying to do this. You're going to have sleepless nights. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be overwhelmed with all these thoughts, right? And fear and also, that's not what Allah wants you to kind of, uh, that's not how Allah wants you to deal with this situation, right? Yes, shaitan is unseen. He has all, all يعني, متفرغلك, and he kind of has an army that's strategizing and all of that, but you shouldn't be freaking out and you shouldn't be paying too much attention to the, uh, to shaitan. Right? That shouldn't be your kind of uh, focus. And the example that's given uh, is the example of a dog, right? So uh, um, let's say a strayed dog or a dog that's barking and, and uh, you're walking on the street and he's disturbing you, he's barking at you, he's causing you some sort of nuisance, okay? Now, if you try to kind of shoo the dog and give it too much attention and try to kick it and try to and interact with it, it's going to get more and more aggressive with you the idea here is that rather than you get yourself busy with the dog right and get into all that uh, headache of managing the dog which is difficult right what is the better thing is to find its owner right so let's assume it's not straight someone's dog right who do you talk to do you start discussing and negotiating with the dog to stop bothering you or do you tell the owner of the dog in lo samahat excuse me can you please take this dog away and can you please you know, any, uh, you know, remove him from this place but that's the idea you talk that that's the wiser thing to do is to khatibu, or to khatib ma'a sahib al-kalb. so you don't talk to the dog right because the dog's job is to disturb you and, and, and bark at you and attack you but you talk to the owner who has control over the dog but in our example al-isti'adha is there for us to kind of um, deal with shaitan rather than we facing shaitan face to face right and try to take him on as an enemy directly no allah has given us an easier way out he's he's told us you know what just come to me seek my protection right seek protection through me 
That's the concept of isti'adah or the ta'widat, right? Um, and that's why we have the al-mu'awwidatan and we have like different ayat in the Quran that talk about isti'adah. Why? Because we declare that, Ya Allah, we are weak and we need your help. We need your help. So a couple of ayat where Allah tells us, like for example, in Surah Maryam, or not Surah Maryam, sorry, this is, I believe, uh, Surah uh, Al-Imran, I believe, yes, Surah Al-Imran, okay. So what we realize here is that فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّي إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى This is the mother of Maryam speaking. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ وَلَيْسَ الذَّكْرُكَ الْأُنْثَى وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمَ And Imran's wife, the mother of Maryam, names her child Maryam, her daughter Maryam. وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمَ وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And I seek your protection and her children from a shaytan al-rajim. So this is one of the sunnahs of the Qur'an and the sunnahs of like the, the du'as that mothers should make for the children. Constantly seeking protection with Allah from shaytan rajim Okay? And then another ayah in Surah Al-A'raf, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعَذْ بِاللَّهِ So نزغ is another word for suggestion or attack, right? Whenever a shaytan attacks you, فَاسْتَعَذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah is most definitely all-hearing and all-knowing. And then in Surah Al-Nahl, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعَذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ Also, that's why, you know, before reciting Qur'an, and even in your salahs, a good practice is to do your isti'adah من الشيطان الرجيم. Uh, another place in the Qur'an in Surah Al-Minun, I believe, is يَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ Allah also calls it hamazat. So notice plural. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّ أَنْ يَحْضُرُونَ So remember how we said that when you remember Allah, your, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brightens up your light and so shaitan runs away. He can't stand it. يَخْنُس That's the word for khannas. وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعَذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْحَلِيمُ Also, slightly different than the, the, the one in Surah Al-A'raf, this time in Surah Fussilat. There it was, إِنَّهُ سَمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Here, إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So there's the Al-Ta'rif. There's some subtlety in the language there. So that's one way to deal with the waswas. Isti'adha. The second, second we talked about is kathrat dhikrullah. It burns shaitan, right? When you remember Allah a lot. And then number three, which we talked about last time, is knowing his strategies and how to deal with them. But then also, it's very important to remember that don't ever think you're safe from shaitan ever, right? And here's the story that's narrated is the story of Imam Ahad, Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So on his deathbed, his students were standing uh, or sitting or surrounding him. And, you know, like one of the sunnahs is when al- al- يعني, someone is uh, on their deathbed, right, dying. Uh, they go through these sakarat al maut they call them, right? These, uh, they're very painful, and even the believers will go through those, that pain, right? And sometimes they lose consciousness, come back to consciousness, lose consciousness, come back to con- consciousness. And one of the, like, the uh, manners of, of what to do with the mayyad during this time is, or the, the, the one that's dying, what, the adab is to say la ilaha illallah, right? And so you say la ilaha illallah. You don't need to really bother the the mayat or the one who's dying with like you don't need to tell them that say la ilaha illallah because sometimes they're going through so much you don't want to overburden them so the sun the better sunnah is to just those who are around the dying person you recite the dhikr la ilaha illallah right and if the dying person says it says it even once then it's fine yeah. so anyway Ahmed, imam ahmad students are saying la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah and they hear Imam Ahmed saying, Laysa ba'd. Not yet. Not yet. And all the students are like looking at each other and they're like, what's going on? Yani, this is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, you know, one of the topmost scholars and yani, very high status in the, in the religious circles. Why is he saying not yet, not yet? Hello, he's, he's on his deathbed. Yani, he should say it. Anyway, um, after a while, 
Imam Ahmed like gains consciousness again, and uh, he asked the students that were you guys talking to me? And yeah, they they said yes, we were saying La ilaha illallah, and you kept saying Laysa ba'd, Laysa ba'd, not yet, not yet. What was that all about? And so Imam Ahmed says that actually Iblis was coming to him during those moments, and he was telling him Najauta minni that Imam Ahmed, you have saved yourself from me, you are free from me, and. Imam Ahmed was responding to Shaitan by saying, not yet, not yet, right? Which is what the students were hearing. But what, is, what we learn from here is that Imam Ahmed knew that had he declared victory over Shaitan before his last breath, this would be a form of ujb and a form of deception, right? So Shaitan was trying to get him even in his last, last breath, but, so, but Imam Ahmed's taqwa level was so high and his awareness was so high that he was wary of the possibility of falling into shaitan's trap even in his last breaths. So that's, again, unless the lesson here is don't feel that you are free from shaitan ever, right? And so um, shaitan would say to Imam Ahmed, Najauta minni ibn Hanbal, like you saved yourself from me by, by not uh, believing uh, what I was suggesting to you, right? And, and by the way, one thing about uh, earlier when we said that don't, don't, pay, don't pay too much attention to the, to the shaitan, is because the nafs actually gets extremely happy when you do that. Because um, the real enemy, actually, the real problem is actually the nafs al-amara basu, actually, that's inside of us, that we studied earlier is a partner in crime with shaitan, right? And uh, so when you, when you give all the blame to shaitan, guess who gets really happy? Your nafs al-amara basu gets really happy because... Uh, you're not going to do anything to fix that up and, and you'll be deluded to think that all the problems are, and we should blame Shaitan for it. So you're not going to be doing any self-correction, any self-improvement on yourself, right? So so this is the survival of the nafs al-amara basu. It tries to serve, I mean, keep itself uh, in control, right? So so when you give full attention to Shaitan, it gets really happy, right? And that's, this explains the difference between Shaitan and the nafs is, like, you know how we know all the hadith, we all know Ramadan, inshallah, is around the corner, inshallah, in a month's time. Allahumma balighna Ramadan, inshallah, may Allah grant us Ramadan. Um, we all know the hadith that shayateen are chained, right? So, like, basically, Ramadan is a one month where shayateen are all chained. But we still have people who, you know, lie, people who do ghiba, namima, gossip, uh, all sorts of um, crimes, sins right it's very common in some in some cases it even increases in ramadan because uh, some people just like to be defiant you know and rebellious but um so how do you explain that right that's a big question many people have is how do people how are people so evil in ramadan while the chayateen are chained the answer is because their nafs al-amara is still there right that's really the the real kind of project so uh to work on right which we'll talk about inshallah maybe next next class so al-asl hiya nafs the real enemy is nafs al-amara bisu'a, right? Once we we work on that, then inshallah it will uh, purify into higher uh, goals. Inshallah, nafs uh, like we said, al-lawama and al-mulhama and mutmainna and radi and marqiya. Another beautiful story here is a, a story uh, of uh, one of the spiritual saints of our times, also Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, rahmatullahi alayhi. So. The story basically uh, says that he was uh, doing his dhikr one day at night and then a bright light comes, uh, appears in front of him and he hears this sound, Ana Rabbuk, I am your Lord, right? And then this, um, he's, he hears a voice from the light which says to him, Asqattu anka taklif. I have removed all the obligations from you, right? So, Sheikh Abdul Qadir is doing dhikr, a light comes, it appears really nice, right? Like a light is coming, there's a sound that says, I am your Lord. And then that sound, that same sound says, I have removed all obligations from you, right? So what does Sheikh Abdul Qadir do in this moment? He identifies that this is shaitan and he says, Ikhsa ya la'een, get lost, you cursed one, right? And yani, Iblis at this moment, says back to uh, Abdul Qadir because he's like, he's like, oh man, I nearly had him. But like Abdul Qadir actually was able to identify that this is shaitan, right? Uh, because 
what do you mean your obligations are removed hello yani you know nobody's an obligation is an obligation for everybody right so no matter how high of a status you reach spiritually the the shar and and the obligations are are upon everybody all of ibadullah so um shaytan says to sheikh abdul qadir he says laqad adlaltu bi hadhihi al hila alf waliyan fa kharajtuhum min diwan al walaya that man i nearly had you but you know what this trick of mine i was able to deceive 1000 of the of the saints who were on their path to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i was able to literally remove them from the uh from this wilaya from this very special sainthood right why by by the idea that you no longer have taklif you're no longer obligated you've reached such a high status that now you don't need to pray you don't need to do salah khalas you love you have allah in your heart and you're always in remembrance of allah so salah and siyam this is all for like beginner muslims but when you get really advanced then you don't need to do this because you're always in a state of dhikr so that's a deception of shaitan and um so many of the saints actually like get suggested with this and uh, yani they believe this lie and shaitan wins basically right but we learn here about the status uh of sheikh abdul qadir jilani and how honorable of a status that was and how he was able to kind of identify at a very granular level that this is this is not uh this is not uh, an inspiration from god or from an angel no this is shaitan right so um khatar khair aw shar is it an evil thought or a good thought yani how do we know what determines whether it's good or bad number one they say it is sharia like allah's law right allah has given us the quran he's given us the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sunnah these two sources are primarily our resources in terms of knowing what whether something whether a suggestion is is good or bad right so we don't need to reinvent the wheel and think about it no we have resources right what does allah say about this what does the prophet say about this khalas they said it's it's good it's good they said it's bad it's bad there's no ah uh, well i think uh, no no i i disagree with that or no no you know what i think times have changed and now yani <laughs> none of that right shara is for forever and uh, of course there are things in between that are like gray area right uh, so in sharia we have things that are obviously haram then we have things that are like not haram haram but they're like disliked like makruh and then there are things that are like the gray areas which are neither haram or halal it's like in the middle mashbuh right um and of course it's recommended to stay away from these shubuhat cuz you more more likely to get inclined to do haram right and then there's mubah things that are neutral not ihram or halal right and then there's halal things that are you're allowed to do right and then mustahab things that are preferred for you to do right so these are and how do you know all of this you need to of course study which was the first aqaba aqabat al ilm you need to understand what does allah want from you what has he told you to do what has he told you not to do and you need to empower yourself with that knowledge right because ignorance uh, leads to um making wrong choices and and wrong understanding right that's why ignorance is a weakness um and then the second resource for you right how do you know whether, whether this is good or bad look at what the predecessors our predecessors as salaf as salih they call them how did they interpret this right if sharia doesn't have any answer for that how did the previous righteous predecessors see this these point this idea right how do they interpret it as good or bad and then the third one which is very interesting right let's say you have something that's not even sharia it's not salaf salah hasn't haven't talked about it something new um so what do you do you uh, you try to suggest it to your nafs al ard ala nafs so you you uh, look at how your nafs reacts to that right is the nafs inclined towards it or does it like kind of turn away from it right and here we're talking about like someone who's in the nafs al amara bi su' stage right when you suggest something to the nafs and it's inclined towards it it has this it, it rushes into it and it has this desire yes let's do it and you know then most probably that is something bad for you right because that's the nature of the nafs al amara bi su' it rushes into satisfying itself and its desires 
But if it's something that's there's muthaqala, there's some there's heaviness in it, there's hesitation, there's laziness, there's procrastination, then probably that is a good thought, right? It's lazy to you know wake up for fajr or read Quran or go visit you know someone who's sick. Yeah, there's it's heavy, right? So that's so it's actually the opposite of the, what the nafs wants, right? That's another third gauge to know whether the thought is good or bad. Let's talk a bit about khatar al khair. So all these positive thoughts, right? Uh, so like we said, there's two categories. There's naf nafha min Allah, okay, uh, which is usually a mathuba. It is a reward for for good deeds that you've been doing. Maybe you have good intentions. You've been making dua. You've been on the right path. So Allah actually uh, suggests you to do more. He gives you more ideas. Okay, why don't you? Uh, build a well for, for the poor. Why don't you go visit your parents today? Why don't you call your best friend who you haven't spoken to in a while? Why don't you give sadaqah? Why don't you pray to rakah here? Why don't you fast? What, you know, so the, the good thoughts keep coming in. And, and you know, as you see, are on the path and as you follow, you know, in the, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, you keep getting more and more ideas on, of goodness. And this is like Allah's way of increasing your station, right? So you kind of are just building more and more of your good deeds and like yani accumulating more and more of good deeds it's a mathuba it's a reward for what you've been doing as for lam, the, the the thought that comes from shaitan they call it lammatul malak okay the thought that comes from allah they call it nafha and then lammatul malak is the suggestion from angels so usually this is they call it ilham or an inspiration and it is in the form of an advice Right, and so in general, these are the two different uh, sources of good thoughts. So, how do we know if it's if the thought is from an angel or from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? It's interesting, yeah. It's Subhanallah, like our, our scholars have actually figured this stuff out for us, right? They've dissected it even to that level. So, there's really three ways to find out. Number one, if there is persistence in that thought coming, right? Al ilhah means that. The thoughts keeps coming, coming, coming. It keeps يعني, reminding you, yalla, yalla, do it. Wake up, wake up for Qiyam al wake up for Qiyam al wake up for Fajr, wake up for Fajr. Go to the masjid, read Quran, you know, uh, visit your mother. Uh, I don't know, give sadaqah, give sadaqah, give sadaqah. There's this persistence in that idea. It's not leaving you, right? Usually that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the khatr al-malak, they give you a suggestion and they just they just go, you know. So they give you advice, they give you an idea, but then they go away. So if you, if you had an idea, uh, well, uh, how about today you give some sadaqah to the poor and then you forget about it, right? And you, you end up not doing it. So that was a suggestion from angel, okay? But if it's something that and it keeps coming to you, coming to you, that there is, know that that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's actually like a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is and reminding you constantly, Allah, do it, do it, do it, do it. So that's one way to find out if it's from angels or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is mathuba. Usually a from Allah, a thought from Allah is like we said, after a good deed that you do or if you have a good intention, it's a form of a reward for it. Uh, as for inspirations, they're usually like a random, right? There's no like prerequisites for it. So there's no muqaddimah, there's no um, prerequisite behind it. It's just a random thought that just pops up, right? You haven't really done anything good or anything. It's just a thought just comes to you, you know. So that's from angels. And the third one is usually angels, their suggestions to you, their thoughts that come to you from angels, they will be more to do with outwardly actions of Zahar. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's suggestions are usually deeper. They're ta'at qalbiya. Like, for example, um, uh, you know, an idea that comes to you that, you know, maybe I need to renew my intentions. Maybe I have an issue with my hujb. You know, I'm taking too much credit for my good deeds. Maybe I think I'm becoming arrogant. There's this ego issue with me. Um, why did I get upset with that uh, situation? You know, why did I react in that way? So this, these inner, this inner work, these ideas that comes to you to, to kind of resolve yourself internally and fix yourself and purify yourself internally, right? Heart work is usually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas externally is usually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving on to the khawatir uh, al these negative thoughts, right? So like we said, there's two sources. There's shaitan and there's the nafs al-ammara bisu. Now, how do we distinguish between the two? Like we said, um, if it's, 
Or by the way, there's a third also reason where you get ideas uh, that are negative, right? Or evil. So one is shaitan. The second is hawa nafs, the nafs of the, or the desires of the low nafs, nafs al-amara bisu. And the third one is huquba. It's actually a, a form of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sends you these thoughts. لِمَنْ يَسْتَخِفْ مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي For the one who is openly disobedient and the one who makes fun of religion, the one who um, thinks that what he's doing is يعني, not really bad, you know, and they have this rebellious attitude. Okay, So for them, just like the one who's on a good deed path, Allah will suggest you more good deeds. The one who's on a bad deed path and they're not doing any tawbah nor istighfar and they don't, they don't feel bad about what they're doing. In fact, they promote it. They want others to do this. They are making fun of religion. They make fun of, they make fun of people who uh, are on the right path. Yani, but Allah, for these people, they, he does what is known as istidraj. Allah will like basically give them more rope. Okay, you want to go farther away from me? Here. Take more, go, 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 you know? And this is very, very dangerous, right? Because they get, bland, they get blinded because just committing sins just becomes easy and easier and easier and easier. And like, yeah, I mean, nothing bad is happening to them. So they think like, oh my God, life is perfect for us. And I mean, things are going well and I'm doing all sorts of sins and life is good. Alhamdulillah, Allah must be happy with me, you know? <laughs> it's actually a form of istidraj, right? And then Allah... Literally, uh, I remember my, my teacher once gave the example of this is um, the danger of the rope being too long, right? So listen to this metaphor. Imagine there is a, a tree trunk and a, and a dog is tied to that trunk, but the, the length of the rope or the leash is just one meter. So what is the dog uh, confined to? That one meter radius, right? Is he going to get in any sort of trouble? No, they're pretty safe, right? Because the dog is just going to be roaming around in that one meter radius circle. But imagine if that rope, the owner of the dog, you know, all of a sudden extended that rope to like, let's say 50 meters. Okay, that leash became 50 meters instead of one meter. Now, all of a sudden, the dog, what is it going to be deluded to think? They're going to be deluded. The dog is going to be deluded to think that, you know, he's actually free, right? So... Um, when he realizes, oh my God, this rope is longer than one meter, he starts walking and then looks around and he's like still free. So he starts going, walking faster and faster and starts running at full speed and is so happy and enjoying life. And he's like, finally, I'm free, right? Finally, free, free, free. And he's running as fast as he can. And the moment he reaches the end of the rope at 50 meters, what's it going to do? The rope is going to pull back and all of a sudden, uh, you know, he's going to choke to death, right? Because um, that is what happens with istidraj, right? So people who uh, fall into this third category, uh, Allah extends the rope, but then it's pulled once and it's game over, right? So it's pretty serious, uh, period, serious uh, danger there. So this person who does istikhaf min al-ma'asi, what does it mean? You look at these sins as like, uh, it's not a big deal, you know. Uh, you make fun of it. You you don't do toba. You openly proclaim your masiya. You're proud of it. You're posting Instagram lives of you sinning openly, and you're like you know calling others to that also. And you become an ambassador of sin, basically, and disobedience, right? So people like this who don't like because you know the nafs al-amara basu it doesn't like to admit it's wrong. It hates to admit that it messed up. Right? And it likes to be proud of what it does. And, you know, this attitude of, I don't care, right? I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do whatever I want. No one can tell me what to do. It's my life. You know, that attitude, this is what we're talking about here. Uh, and of course, they're inviting others to this masi. Yeah. So uh, in a nutshell, shaitan, sh satanic thoughts are many. They're kathira, aktharuha, right? So the most of the thoughts you're going to be getting are shaitan satanic uh, shaitani thoughts but they're the weakest of them all right you just say do some dhikr goes away right um, and of course know his tactics like we said the second one the nafs 
suggestions from the nafs are the most difficult, asabuha, because it requires mujahada, it requires self-analysis and you know resisting your temptations and saying no and, and requires a lot of like discipline, right? And the third one, and of course for the nafs, of course, um, dhikr and having a teacher, a guide, a mentor helps you, of course, uh, purify your nafs. So, you know, doing this on your own is, is very difficult. Once you have a guide, someone who's like a mentor, someone who's like, a, you know, a coach or someone who's a, an accountability partner, very important uh, to help you overcome this really difficult nafs uh, uh, obstacle, right? And the third one is, like we said, the most dangerous, right? Because this is istidraj. Um, right? What's the point of knowing it's from nafs or shaitan? Because for each one, there is a specific kind of protocol to kind of uh, deal with it, right? So if you don't know if it's shaitan or nafs, how are you going to deal with it, right? So like we said, for shaitan, how do you deal with it? Isti'adha, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajeem. Doing dhikr of Allah a lot, and that could be even salah, it could be Quran, it could be many things. Dua. And of course, studying and knowing through what Allah and the Prophet has have taught us about shaitan, knowing his tactics and knowing how to respond to them. As for, uh, let's say, the aqoba, the, the dangerous one, right? When Allah kind of is suggesting you these thoughts, but they're like, it's because you're going on the wrong track, right? And there's istidrat. So what, what's the solution here is sur'at at tawbah You rush back to tawbah and you do istighfar and all of that. So um, how do I know if it's from shaitan or from my nafs or is it from a, uh, it's a punishment from Allah? So if you find these thoughts coming to you after you've sinned immediately, right? Uh, that is probably like a, a punishment, right? So, you know, you've, you've done one sin and then you get, you get another sin suggested to you and then a third sin and the fourth sin. These are forms of aqub. It's a punishment from Allah. It's a, uh, so you need to be aware of that and immediately rush back to tawbah and istighfar and yani, give some sadaqah or something because yani, you, know, you don't want to go down that path like we said. And then ask yourself, if I do dhikr, or isti'adah, does it go away? If it goes away, then you know what? That was shaitan, right? If it went away. But if it's, you're doing isti'adah and dhikr and all, but it's still there, then you know what that is? Most probably your nafs, your nafs al-ammara bisu. These hidden temptations and desires and shahawat inside of you, right? Um, and also, if the suggestion that's coming to you is, like insistence that do this, do this, do this, you know, cheat on your wife, cheat on your husband, cheat, 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 have an affair, have an affair, have an affair. Guess what? That's probably not from shaitan. It's from your nafs al-ammara basu, right? Um, because there's a shahwa involved. But if it's like a random, you know what? Hey, why don't you go and um, why don't you uh, say something nasty to this person? Why don't you steal a bit of money from here? And just random, like, bad suggestions. Why don't you look at that haram thing? Why don't you go uh, to that haram place and drink something haram? Why don't you go eat something haram today? And just random bad things, that's probably shaitan. Because shaitan, once you get you into trouble, he doesn't really care how and what you do. Man. As long as you're sinning, he's, he's good, you know. Uh, so shaitan wouldn't insist you have to, uh, you know, you have to steal, you have to steal, steal, steal. No, that, if you have to steal and it's insisting, then that's a nafs issue. It's, it's some a disease of, uh, that you have with money, right? And you want to get something, you want to get make money very quickly and like, you're concerned about your status in society. So you're planning out, okay, I need to, the best way is to steal. And so you have a plan. That's the nafs. Shaitan's thoughts are usually random. So shaitan, la yahammuhu kayfa tahluk. Shaitan doesn't care how you destroy, are destroyed, right? He wants to destroy you in whatever way possible. So he has a variety of, uh, like a menu, right? Literally, of, okay, how about today you, um, you know, eat this haram thing? How about you do this, you know, how about you, you know, smoke some drugs today? How about you, you go to the bar today? How about you have this affair? And how, and then just like all over, all over the place, right? 
And so they describe that the difference between the nafs and the shaitan is, is uh, it, the difference is like the tiger and the wolf. So the tiger, when it attacks its prey, it is focused, it is direct, it knows exactly uh, you know, what it wants and it's going to have it no matter what. There's insistence and, and it's, it's, it's either the prey or the tiger, right? That is more like the nafs, al-amara bisu. Uh, as for sh- shaitan, is like the wolf. Like he'll attack, but if he doesn't get, get you today, he's going to retreat go plan something, come in the middle of the night and then try to attack you in a different angle. And like, you know, he's creative in that. And, and shaitan, like another, like before we close, shaitan also in a very smart way, sometimes gives you suggestions of khair, good thoughts with the intention of destroying you. So for example, um, sometimes he, he does that so that's like a bigger uh, khair uh, gets wasted from you. So for example, this is very common in Ramadan. Go pray tarawih, 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 qiyam al-layl, qiyam al-layl. And then guess what? You get so tired, uh, you, you miss your fajr prayers, right? Very common. So uh, that's a like, yani, classic one, right? What's a priority? A fajr is a priority. Tarawih is a sunnah. It's not really a priority, but people give so much attention to the sunnah and they usually miss their fajr prayers. So liyafuta alayka khayrun aham, right? So he does that sometimes. So shaitan is suggesting you to go pray tarawih, right? It's a good thought. But guess what? His agenda is like, I want him to miss Fajr today, right? Um, or like, why don't you go give sadaqa to this woman? And then um, that's a good suggestion. But then he'll plan in a creative way that, okay, you know what? Don't just leave the sadaqa in front of the door and, and walk away. No, no, no. It's, that's rude. Wait for her to come out and then uh, you know, talk to her nicely and you know, be gentle with her. It's not good to be rude and like just, just give the sadaqa and and then you know he'd be like, well, you don't just give the sadaqa. You have because still feel bad. Like you have to, yani, give it in a creative way. And then slowly, slowly, one step. These are called khutwa to shaitan, right? Footsteps of shaitan. He will drag you into it slowly and slowly and slowly until you close the door. And then you're in khalwa. And then something a bigger haram happens. So you're he gave you a suggestion to go give sadaqa, but it ends up in some sort of zina or some sort of um, adultery or fornication act, right? Uh, so there's like three ways in which shaitan does this number one is nashat dun khashia right like when you get a suggestion and you get active and you're like yalla let's just do it right without you just um, thinking about the idea and renewing your intentions and, and like thinking about okay what, what are, why am I really doing this is it for Radwan Allah is it going to make is it make me a better person? Is it going to benefit them? Right? When you don't do that and you just rush into it, oh my God, that sounds like an amazing idea. Let's go. Let's do it. Know that that's maybe could be a satanic thought, right? Um, and then number two uh, is it's kind of similar. Like you, you respond to it with rush, right? Uh, without like carefully kind of looking at it, right? And then the third one is uh, not being blinded with the consequences, right? So, so, you know, a moment always thinks, okay, if I do this, what are the consequences? Is it really gonna benefit? Is it really gonna play, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? And then um, feeling very safe about what you do, you know, you don't think about, okay, what could go wrong here, right? Uh, is there any chance that I, I may be doing this for pride or for ujb or for like self kind of gratification? Is there any riya here? anything like am i seeking something is there do i have any agenda in this right so when you just openly just do it without contemplating these details that's when shaitan usually kind of suggests you something good to get you into a bigger trouble and then of course uh, last but not least is this idea of um, shayateen al ins the shayateen from people right because we talked about shayateen but we sometimes think shayateen are all like jinn but there's also min al jinnati wa nas in Surah Al-Nas, right? So there's even people from shayateen al ins who are um, problematic. And in fact, they say that uh, they're even more dangerous. Akhtar min shayateen al jinn. Okay? So that's uh, that's a problem here. Akhtar min shayateen al jinn. Just give me a second here. I need to... 
my laptop is dying and I need to just plug it in very quickly. Excuse me for a second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry for that. So shiatin and ints are much, much more dangerous than shiatin and Why? Because, um, of course, you're going to do dhikr or istada. Your, your best friend who's trying to talk you into doing drugs isn't going to go away, right? <laughs> he's with you. He's hanging out with you. Uh, you know, um, she, he, whatever it is, right? They're around you and there's peer pressure. And um, they're insisting, yalla, it's just this one time. Yalla, let's try this out. It's going to be fun. Trust me, let's go. You know, you don't want to miss out. You don't want to be the odd one out. Yalla, you know, it's cool. And you feel like they're like suggesting to you. And they're very like, shayateen al ins are very creative at convincing you, right? Um, they think of a hundred ways to kind of twist the story to make it seem like it's going to be okay. And, you know. So you think that they're actually giving you advice and they care about you. And you see it all, you see them all the time and they'll give you all sorts of pressure and they'll come up with all sorts of excuses. You know, let's smoke hashish tonight. Yeah, and it's okay. It's a plant. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's a plant. How can it be haram? And, and by the way, I found this fatwa on Google that says that it is halal. So let's just take that. Yeah. And yeah, they say that a funny statement here is in kana halal If it's halal, then we're we're consuming it. And if it's haram, then anyway, listen, by smoking, we're actually burning it. So we're burning haram, so it's okay. And you know, they come up with these twisted ideas to kind of justify your actions. And so um, these shayatin al ins are the ones that who instigate hatred and they spread lies and backbiting and nanima and oh my god did you hear what she said about you you won't believe what she said about you the other day you know and they want to like spread this fitna and this hatred and jealousy and you know um, oh my god did you see her dress the other day or or did you hear who she's going out with you know all of this gossip and rumor this is the shayateen the ins kind of game so solution how do you deal with the shayateen and ins give them advice Resist what they're trying to say. You know, stop what they're suggesting you to do. If they accept it, great. If not, then <clears throat> withdraw. Because you want to save yourself. And by the way, when you withdraw, again, the intention is, and we talked about this in the, uh, the lesson about people, right? The obstacle of people. When you withdraw, you don't want to withdraw with the attitude that, oh my God, she's so messed up and I'm so pure. I'm better than her. No. You withdraw with the intention that, listen, I'm weak. And I, if I continue accompanying this person she's going to get me in trouble or he's going to get me in trouble i need to i'm weak and uh, i can get affected and the prophet Salam did say that watch out who your company is right so i'm going to withdraw and save myself right uh and then of course number two is uh, look for good company you know uh and you know there's oh, there's good good people every in every community there's online communities now you can uh, literally have a virtual community. You can, uh, you know, I even think sometimes books are like a companion, right? So when you read a book, actually you are accompanying the author for let's say a month or two or whatever, how long it takes you to finish that book. Books are a great company, honestly. YouTube videos, audiobooks, podcasts. So Alhamdulillah, there are many ways in which you can fill that void of good company today. Be creative about it and be wise with how you spend your time and what you are consuming, what are you watching, what are you listening to, what are you reading. And Allah says, Those who strive in our path, right? Allah will guide you, right? Sometimes Allah will give you the basira, the insight, which is the heart's ability to see what's good and what's bad, right? So 
this basira, this insight is what's is going to help you with all these. Since we're talking about khawatir, right? Especially like khawatir shaitan and nafs and uh, the aquba. Like with insight, things you get clarity, right? And with clarity, you're able to deal with things. So Allah, these special people who are on this path, and may Allah make us all of them. And you know, inshallah, all of you are amongst these people. You've been, you know, disciplined with these calls. You're coming. You're showing up every Sunday. You're you're probably not maybe even live, but you're watching the recordings. But uh, you're serious about your spiritual growth and Allah will, inshallah, grant you with this light, with this insight to be able to, inshallah, uh, protect your hearts and uh, your iman. So these basair, these insights, uh, sometimes Allah will save you from it. He'll, he'll teach you before you even uh, يعني, get attacked by it. So you're يعني, prepared to ha- on how to deal with it. And some people are like, no, but that like it's not realistic. How is that going to happen? So, يعني uh, don't لا تستعظم العطية بنظرك إلى المعطى. Don't say that. Oh no, no, no. This gift of insight, it's, يعني it's, it's not really realistic. It doesn't really make sense. No, look at انظر إلى عظمة المعطى. Look at the the majesty and the grandeur of the one who is giving. For Allah, it's nothing يعني, to, to guide whoever he wants to guide, right? Allah is extremely generous uh, and giving. And uh, you know those who seek it will, inshallah, get it. So with that, inshallah, I conclude today's lesson. Sorry for taking it too long, but like you can imagine, this is um, a detailed topic here, uh, dissecting thoughts. And uh, you see how like, the Islamic spirituality is like the science has dissected it in, in very amazing detail, subhanAllah, you know, um, and given us ways on how to deal with it, how to distinguish um, compared to just a shallow, oh, that's an evil thought, that's a good thought, and with no plan on how to, uh, you know, deal with those thoughts, right? And so, so many people with mental health issues uh, and can be helped with, with this kind of knowledge, subhanAllah. So, inshallah, may all of you also be one day uh, be used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as instruments to, to heal others and, and share this beautiful knowledge and this light that will take them out of the darknesses they're in into the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's end with a dhikr inshallah. As usual, get comfortable, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths from your nose. Slow and deep breaths. Inhale, cool light entering into your heart. And exhale, dark smoke leaving your heart. Okay, let's begin reciting. Ya Salam. Silently from your heart, call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of all peace, and try to feel His presence and his, the peace that He grants you in your heart. Allah is the only source of peace. Allah is the source of real peace, true peace. And the peace that he grants you is never ending. Allow that peace to light up your heart and to expand and spread. Just as the heart pumps blood into every cell, every part of your body, allow this through the dhikr, ya salam, allow this peace to spread in your entire body. Keep repeating, ya salam.
and feel that deep inner peace. Very good, let's move on to Ya Hadi. Allah, the one who protects and guides. Feel Allah's divine protection and guidance. And feel his love for you. He protects you and guides you because he loves you. Unconditionally. Repeat Ya Hadi and feel his protection and guidance. You are not alone. You are safe and you are guided every step of the way. Ya Hadi. Very good. Let's move on to Ya Hafiyu. Again, feeling Allah's protection and safety. He loves you, therefore, He protects you from all evil. And with this comes empowerment. You feel safe and you feel empowered by Allah's protection. Repeat Ya Hafiyu. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we're done for today. Sorry, I, I you know took longer than usual, but inshallah, it was benefit for everybody. Zakumullah khair, subhanakallah, alhamdulik. Nashadun la ilaha illa ant. Nasaghfiruk wa tubu ilaik. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Share all.